I've got this opportunity of a lifetime and I think it would be really good for you and your family. It's an investment opportunity and I don't want you to miss out. It's called hypernation. It's a scam. 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 For anyone watching this video, people out there, there is no easy way to become a millionaire. There is no easy way to make money. So please, don't get yourself caught up with people who come and tell you you make you become a millionaire in six months or a year or two years time. It is Certainly, I can assure you 100% that it is not that easy. So please do not do that. Think carefully before you get into any kind of business like that. Somebody's going to promise you anything. I would, in fact, I would suggest if somebody promises you that kind of thing, just say no. Welcome to the What The Heck podcast. I'm your host, I'm Danny De Heck. And today I've got a special guest called the Afric Lad, who's a budding YouTuber. And he's going to tell us about himself and why he's sticking his neck out trying to help people from um, not investing in Ponzi schemes. But I thought, I haven't done a YouTube and a podcast for a while, and I thought I would bring back the old 12 questions with What The Heck. So, welcome along to the podcast and also YouTube channel. Um, how you doing? Yes, I'm very well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me here, Mr. Danny the Hick. Listen, man, I'm I'm just, I'm just excited for this one. I think it's going to be great. Nah, good stuff. Now, what whereabouts in the world are you? I'm in New Zealand. You you're at Sunday at um, quarter past ten, and I'm no, you're Saturday at quarter past ten at night, and I'm. Sunday morning at quarter past ten, we're twelve hours apart. Yeah, well, I'm yeah, I'm actually here Saturday, yeah, in the UK. So yeah, it's, it's, the world is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, late it here. People are in bed, or some people are still up. Well, London people don't sleep here anyway. But you know, what I mean, it's late. You are early. There you go. <laughs> I'll tell you about that one other day. Um, interesting enough, uh, because I live in the future, I can tell you the lotto um, ticket numbers. Would you like to know them? <laughs> Listen, man, this is a great one. This one, this is how people should be winning the monies. Yeah. Make a million. Well, it's more them. chances winning the lottery than uh, winning money on Ponzi schemes, I tell you. <laughs> exactly. That's All right. Before people true. get to know you, I've got I've got 12 random questions. I don't even know what they are. The first question, um, I just hit my microphone. That was not good. Uh, aside from necessities, what's one yep. thing you could never go, um you oh sorry here we go what's one thing you could not go a day without one thing that could not go a day without yep wow that's a very serious question i i think hmm i think what i would say is meditation meditation Good yeah. man. And when I, what I mean by that, I don't mean sitting still and meditate i know people who think meditation means you sit you haven't got, you're not sitting on a yoga mat no, I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't got that. No, right. my meditation is either when I'm just about to go to bed, lay in bed, or sometimes when I'm riding my bicycle around, I could be riding my bicycle to somewhere, maybe to work in the morning. I'm going through stuff, thinking about stuff, processing things, you know, giving myself some positive vibes for the day. That is one thing that I certainly love to do almost every day. I have to do one, one of those mornings and evenings or sometimes just in the evenings. Ah, that's good. I think that's yeah. pretty um, entrepreneurial in a way because you're always thinking of a way to find a, a solution to a problem, analyzing Absolutely. everything continuously. You've got you got a spot on. Yeah, that's I think exactly we're both we've both probably got ADHD. That could be the other <laughs> technical name for it, but uh, well, let's not go there today. All right, question number two: Where do you see businesses? Oh, this is goody. Where do you see businesses of the future? Are we all going to be AIs? What do you think? <laughs> well, it looks like I've just been reading that uh, the other guy created a robot. You know, what's his name? The rich dude. Um, oh, no, Elon. Elon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm on one. Robot that's looking like all human, whatever. But yeah, um, I think for sure there's going to be a lot of technology going, even more technology, more improving. Um, So that's one area of business. But I have a feeling that businesses are diversifying as well and it could be from any angle but also it comes down to where you live yeah. what technology you have 
how you're using what's how you've been trained if you have the, the the skills so for example in the west where i live you will see that a lot of things have been technology ties if that's what i'll use it's in technology um but also but well, coming from africa you can find you find that quickly that a lot of people are still far behind in terms of technology so we're still using the traditional methods for businesses running yep. but again that comes down to infrastructure where you live etc cetera, etc cetera. for me personally i i i'm going with both i seen the traditional business side of things without technology hence i'm doing farming up country but also obviously I, I work in it as well so i go with the technological side of things as well because that's where it looks like we're heading we, we're yeah. getting ele electronics vehicle driverless vehicles all sorts is happening so people have to be tuned up be educated and be smart to get into that world sooner than later so you can control it or well maybe not control it but you you know to handle it basically yeah. Interesting enough, when you said um, diversification, I built a house um, oh, 14 years ago and they brought in a guy to do the foundations. Then they brought in a guy just to do the framing. And then they brought in, you know, a, a window guy, a kit, you know, every, the jibber, the painter, everyone was outsourced. And that, like the olden days, you used to have one tradie doing the whole lot from start to finish. Yeah. I know. And is it like that in Africa? Yeah, yeah. In Africa, you get like, again, if you go to my mom's village, for example, my hometown, yes, you have one dude who built a house up. You know, I mean, they, 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 in fact, we, that's what I mean by the technology is different. There, they use like mud bricks or those mud. They put mud and put frames, put mud around it. Somebody who just build the whole thing, him or his, and his wife or him and his son or just him doing it they don't have to bring special people but of course in the city and most especially the advanced african countries the develop the ones that are, are more advanced than the others in terms of development they do similar thing like this as well they have a contractor where then that contractor they have somebody who builds the tiling somebody who does the windows and somebody yeah. who does the bricks and somebody who does whatever the plastic the, the painting etc all those kind of different things are there but that's for mainly cities up country is completely different. Yeah. So you reckon Elon yeah. Musk might have a bit of a trouble with his AI building houses? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that guy looks like he's taking over the world. He's doing everything. Oh, okay. He's in it to, to the moon now or whatever. Because he's going to space. Yeah. No, he's going to Mars. I think that's where the ecosystem is um, heading. There's wonder he's not into that. Thank goodness he hasn't started up his own metaverse. We'll be doomed. <laughs> okay. What um, What do you most regret not having done? What would you most regret not having done by the end of your life that could be a bit morbid i know you're in good health i hope you're in good health i am in good health so far you know touch wood uh, and thank god for that um what if i have not done that before i go to my grave what would i mostly regret <sighs> that's a tough one because for me i i don't bother i don't worry myself about regrets i just see that if anything that i haven't done that's it. It wasn't meant to be, and I haven't done it. I just why I try now. I try to do everything in my power that mm -hmm. I can. Anything that I know I can do, I try to do it. If I can't do it, or I or I made a mistake, I didn't do it. I don't see that as a lesson and learn. But if we are going to talk about something that might regret that I didn't do, I go to my grave without doing it. It's probably um, taking my family to my hometown that's probably one thing i'll regret if i if i don't if i could not take my kids to my hometown then certainly i'll regret that one because i want them to go there especially with all what i'm doing there i want them to go i want them to connect i want them to even when i'm gone to be there feel like they're part of there as well because obviously they are they are they're from yeah. there, born there cool. but, yeah no, i was i was hoping you weren't going to say uh, buy yourself a membership with hyper nation but i'm glad you didn't <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that. Right. Maybe that's maybe that's one thing I'll definitely regret not buying. <laughs> yeah. Now this 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 next question is a bit basic for Kiwis, uh, which is New Zealanders. But for you, I'd be quite interested to know how many languages do you speak? Um, I speak up to three right now. Up to three, yeah. Yeah. So it's not much. Well, basically, obviously, I speak English. I speak Creole. 
Creole is what we spoke, what we speak in Sierra Leone, mainly, well, over the country, but mainly in Freetown. Then I speak my mom's language, which is Limba as well. So uh, those three, I speak, yeah. Is your mom got a different language? My mom's got a different language, yes. I am, I'm a mixed person as well, by the way. So my mom definitely speaks a different language. Yeah. My dad, different language from different ethnicity. We yeah. have multiple, like, it's, a, it's a mixture. Yeah, yeah, we don't get that so much over here, so it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Really Here's a similar question, but as I said, they're all random. Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Five years' time, <laughs> I, my goal is <laughs> that's a tricky one. The way the world is going, probably yeah. join Hyper Nation. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be with Mr. H. <laughs> yeah, probably new Mr. H in five years' time. Yeah, you have to get a mask. Yeah. 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 No, but in five years' time, what I want to be able to do or where I want to be five years' time is I want to, For I mean, I probably told you or not, I'm doing, I've started a real estate business back home. So five years from now, I want to be able to have two more properties built. And then I want to be able to have the rice, the farm extended to, like I mentioned to you, that I want to have the beans, I want to have peanuts. I want Basically, I want to make sure my farm has expanded to three or four more different crops. I want to have two more properties built. And then I'm able to, I want to also spend longer back home, as in six months there and six months here. That's, that's the balance I want to have in five years' time. That sounds really cool, man. Um. Well, I did have another question that came to mind when you're talking. How old are you, mate? <laughs> I am definitely very old. Are you? <laughs> you don't know how old I am, then. You must think I'm granddad. I, granddad. I am. I I started to let you guess that, but I I will say to you for sure that I am above thirty. Ah, oh, about thirty. I am above that. Oh, you are. All oh, right. Yeah, I was going twenty nine. So um, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'll go 33. That's my heart. It's still not correct. I think you need to go slightly up. Oh, right. Okay, 31. <laughs> 31. You said 33. I said go up. You went down. Oh, right. I'm no good. See, I told you I'm no good with numbers. It's usually words. No, I'm, um, no 34 then. Sorry? 34? No, nah, I'm older than that. I'm, I'm 40. Oh, yeah. oh, you're ancient, mate. <laughs> you just, you, Say again. You, I'm 53. No, I'm 52. I forget. I think I'm 52. <laughs> you don't know your age. Yeah, no, I'm, tw I'm 52. Well, funny enough, you know, I, just, I was brought up in a religious cult, and I used to be a Jehovah's Witness, and we never celebrated birthdays. So right. I, I don't keep track of my birthdays, really. I literally have to think I was born in 1970, and then I think, what year is it? And it's 2022. Then I work it out that way. <laughs> I like that. All That's right, here we go. Another question. What form of public transport do you prefer? And I've got a few options here. We've got air, boat, train, bus, car. But you might have a tuk-tuk. I don't know. Do you have tuk-tuks? What do you have? TNGs? Well, do you have No, in Africa. In London. Oh, well. Well, in Sierra Leone, my country, we have tuk-tuks. Yes, we call them um, kekes. We have bikes, the okadas. They call them okada. And, yep. of course, we have taxis and so now, when you talk of the by preferred form of transportation there, it now comes down to what time of the day, what you know what I mean, and the traffic. So the best form of transportation around, usually, it's the tuk-tuks, the keke. Right. For yep. me, anyway, the reason being, it's airy, because it's not locked everywhere, it's airy. Uh, yep. And it's kind of little protected compared to the bike. If you drive ride a bike, you're like exposed. And yeah. I think guys are reckless when they ride around as well. But yeah. there's traffic, because there's traffic, the bike is probably a good form to travel because then you get past the traffic. Interesting but, enough, I was in Bangladesh and they had CNGs yeah. and I didn't know why they called them CNGs, but then I realized that was, well, they told me it was because of the gas that they run on. So so why are they called KKs? KK. KK? Yeah. What's that stand for? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Just, I don't even think that name originated from Sierra Leone. I think it originated from somewhere in Nigeria or somewhere. I don't know. But it's yeah. called Keke. I, don't know. I wasn't there when it started. When this yeah. form of oh, you need to, started, you need to research there. that, my friend. You need to figure that yes, out. That's a good idea, actually. But when I travel back to Sierra Leone each time, that's when it became popular, Keke. And then the bikes, Okada, that's, that name definitely originated from Nigeria, Okada. That's how they uh -huh. call it in Nigeria. 
Yeah, because in Thailand mean, they have tuk-tuks. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have a clue what Okada means, but again, when the, that whole Keke Okada thing started, I wasn't in Sierra Leone anymore. I left Sierra Leone a long time ago, but I do go every year, so and twice a year sometimes, so I get to use them. But hey, that's how they travel there. They cars, of course. I prefer the vehicles at night, late night, when I want to go places. Of course, I use the car, but yeah. during the day when you talk a block with traffic, Keke is quicker or bike is quicker. Yeah, I'm trying to think what I like. I mean, yeah, I think airplanes, I've been on an airplane anywhere, anytime. But I mean, that's pretty luxury and very expensive. Uh, hold up, I'm just going to stop my dog. Dog's biting a cable. In your bed. <laughs> He's biting the lighting cable. <laughs> Do you mind in your pixel? Look, ah, oh, boy, he's naughty. <laughs> Chewing on the cable. Don't chew on the cables. All right. I think we've had that conversation now. All right. So is your glass half full or half empty? Um, the answer to well, that. I'll let you answer. Let me go. <laughs> I think my glass, I will say, it, if, I'm, if I'm honest with you, this glass half full, half empty thing, it's not my, I don't worry about it. It's not my thing. For me, I just carry on. So I don't honestly know what the difference? I've never sat down there. Okay, what's the difference with a half full, half empty? What's that? What does that mean? Even I don't even have a yeah. clue. All I know is some people. I think when they say half full, does that mean they still got somewhere to go? Something like that. And then half empty. What does it mean? I don't have a clue. Uh, it I'm just means that you positive or a, a negative Nancy. <laughs> but, yeah, I see. Well, I, I tell you, I I tell like you what, though. Up. Sorry, man. You go. No. I like to consider myself as very positive. I always have a. I have positive mindset in life. And yeah, it just with how I do things, I like to be very positive. That doesn't mean, of course, I don't stop and check and critique certain things, but I like to have a go at things and do them and go for them, really. No, that's good. I had a young girl come along to my one of my meetings on Thursday, and yeah. um, she basically had been reading a lot of self help books, and she said, um, she was, uh, she, you need to know your why, and I'm going. Yeah, I'm 53. I've read a lot of self books. I've gone to a lot of courses and she was only, I think she was 29. But I think at that age, you need to go through, you know, they repeat a lot of the stuff you've heard from rich dad, poor dad stuff. And <laughs> and a lot of that, that, that half glass full thing and all that. I'm sort of, yeah, I've sort of heard it all before. <laughs> like I, I get the positive, how to keep the mindset and blah, blah, blah. But that's what I think of when I hear some of those sometimes. Yeah, but sometimes that's how they get, you know, they try to ask you these stupid questions to know where, to just try to basically try to read you and you say something, they know, okay, that's the one we, we can go for it for that person. You know, yeah. I mean, something like that. You've yeah. got it. All right, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? I think it's going to be home with your mum, I'm guessing. It's going to be absolutely home. That's exactly yep. my where we're living. Home. It's, it's warmer. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's much more. Yeah, it's warmer. Um People are more friendly, uh, you know. I I don't live too far from the beach. Um, so whereabouts are you at the moment? Are you in the UK? I am in the UK. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, in the right. UK right now. I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. I, th I did. I, I was sort of trying to figure out your messages there for a wee bit, and then I realized you you were saying let's tee up UK time together. That explains the twelve hours. So how, yeah, yeah. how often do you go home? Um, I'm I. I absolutely go home once a year. That's for sure. I have to go once a year. Yep. Or other times I go twice a year, sometimes three times a year, depending on businesses. Like I said, I'm doing the real estate business now. So, but, but I have to go once a year. That's definite. Well, good yeah. stuff, mate. Most okay. Definitely. Here goes another. Have you been to Africa? Hey? Eh? Have you been to Africa before? No. I'm probably, in some ways, I shouldn't be because I'm, I'm I'm pretty intrepid traveler. I've been to like Cambodia's and um, last one was Bangladesh, China and India. And I went to India and I found it really, really hard. And when I left, I thought, oh, I'm so glad to leave. But 20 years later, I was dying to go back thinking, I want to go back. I want to go back. So <laughs> probably if I, uh, I don't know, is Africa third world? Is that, uh, would that be fair? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's, that's how they call Africa is third world. So that's why we, we, we're trying to change. You're trying to bring people there so oh there's a tourism come, opportunity come and, mate you can come and visit there's lots of oh there's lots of opportunities around there what you need to do is get down there i can link you up with some people yeah get over there west africa i'll link you up with some people that will show you what you need to do and 
whatever businesses you want to start, we have all the answers over there. Well, I want to start a um, Ponzi scheme, mate. <laughs> <laughs> they they must make a killing. <laughs> Have you got lots of friends? You sound like you've got a family. We could start with them first. <laughs> I'm glad you. I thought you. I, I, I was waiting for when you're gonna when you're gonna pick up what I'm about to do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's um. I'll just do a, a noise for that idea. The oh, I should really do that one, shouldn't I? The the thing is, so um, that's obviously what we've got together on. Is I'm just watching out for my dog because he's. I don't want to meet in cables, but he's walked out there and he's had a drink of water, so he's probably peeing on the kitchen floor. Oh dear. Um, we'll finish the questions and then we'll have a bit of a chat because I've got 12 questions. I, I can't, I'm an ADHD, I have to do the 12 questions. So no what worries. would you rather do? Accounting, marketing, planning, uh, customer service or administration? Um, planning, I like to plan. Do you say planning is one of the questions? Yep, that's right. Planning, I certainly like to plan. You're an entrepreneur, I can tell. That's brilliant. You've got to have planning. <laughs> I often, if I start a new project, I usually think the whole lot out of my head before I even start. That's exactly what it is. Everything is in here planned, like all the way there. Yeah. <laughs> I think, I, I actually think what you're probably doing, um, I've got 13 years up on you, mate, but I reckon that you do um, um, oh, feasibility studies on every idea. And I think that's you thinking now this might be a good idea and this could be a stupid idea, but let me think about how, if I did want to make this a business, how will I, um, what's that dog? Uh, how would I turn it into a business and would it be profitable? Yeah. You yeah. know, so yeah. that's all part of planning, I reckon. So part of the planning, you think food stuff, you see it and then you write stuff down, you write this, you got the ideas here and there, you think about it, okay, how is this going to work? And then you mix it up, you put this here and there and then, then you have a structure, you plan stuff, and then you start to say, okay, let's see how this goes. Let's see what happens. You start to take actions. Yeah. And uh, you have a goal. Then the, I have a philosophy how I got a goal and I got plans. My plans can change. I change the plans. Yeah. The goal is set somewhere to get to. And that's, that's what my life is. That's what I'm about right now. And that's what I'm on. So just carry on. I had a guest speaker come along to one of my think tank meetings once. And he was, um, he had this business, he's called um, Mike Mayo, and he made big biscuits with big chunky bits of chocolate. And he had these mm. glass jars that he put the biscuits in, and he went into all the dairies. He said he went to, I think, 150 dairies, and uh, I think uh, I was something stupid, like 149 of these dairy owners agreed to put his cookie jar on the bench. And oh, people would come in yeah. and they'd buy stuff. He was, he was one of the first guys that when you went into a shop, you would have nothing on the bench other than the till. But then people started putting upsells on the tills. So he had prime real estate. Anyway, long story short, he's a multi-millionaire. And wow. he's diversified. And he, he, he came and spoke at one of my meetings. And he said that the cookie jar was the best, best thing he ever... He said that he loved his cookie jars. Every time he got one of those on the counter... Okay. He had prime real estate and he was away laughing, but he, he decided one day that he would start up a business called Aristotle and it was in IT and every morning people would pay a yearly fee and your phone would ring and it would tell you a motivational message and you would be inspired and you'd be charged wow. up. He put a million and a half dollars into it. He had, I wow. think he had eight staff and he said it was the dumbest thing he ever did. <laughs> and I said, um, and I said, I remember it because I was one of your customers because you could get one free motivatable message as a test and you could just right. keep, keep using a different email address or something. I've forgotten how it was. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, and it was hopeless. But when I heard about it, because I remember this was 20 plus years ago, I remember right. thinking, why are you going outside of what you, you are good at? Why have you started up in a different industry altogether? Yeah. So his, the thing that he said to me that I remember every day, he said, you need to have your failures in business because they are the compost for your next opportunity. And wow. I love that. Fair so enough. Was, that's, that's a very good one. That's a good one. That's absolutely. It's a good one. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I just hope that he probably um, would have probably done a little bit more research as well, though. Well, but I guess probably he did do a research and then, yeah. Like you mentioned, anyway, sometimes you have to get this 
failures to learn from them and then you improve. Yeah. You learn, you improve, you learn, you improve, and then more other ideas open up, isn't it? No, knowledge is key, I think. And um, what's the worst, um, what's the worst gift you've ever received? Gifts. Yeah. What's the gift oh, somebody's yeah. given you and you've gone, oh my God. Oh yeah. I think outfits. Outfit, yep. That's an outfit that, and this interest is actually from my sister. She's probably not going to like this. Now, if she sees this podcast, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Drop her in a mate. Don't worry. Don't hold back. I, I, remember I went home and then my sister sent, prepared a gift for me. It was, I don't know. I don't know what she was thinking. She, I don't know whether, what, because she knows me. She's seen me. Yeah. She made the outfit. It's double my size. <laughs> <laughs> you have, to have a, a gold necklace and a silver dangler on it and walk around like you're trying to be stylish that sort of style i was like because she was hoping that well, i'm going to make him this nice african outfit so he can have that when he gets back to the uk he use it in the summer i looked at it i was like whoops that's not me what's going on here this is too big yeah. so yeah that was cool. like, I've, I've not used that was why well, i accepted it thankfully she wasn't the one who brought it she sent somebody else to bring it to me so I just said, oh, say thanks for me, blah, blah, blah. And I wrapped it. It's still in the suitcase somewhere. Wow. <laughs> I um, When I was younger, I painted um, and wallpapered because I used to be a painter and a decorator, my girlfriend's father's house. And uh, she said to me, oh, what do you want? Uh, do you want to be paid or do you want um, dad to get you a gift? And I said, no, no, I'm quite happy to be paid. So he decided that payment was too expensive. And he decided he bought me some bright green socks and a bright green oh. top as a gift for spending seven days of my life painting his and oh, I just couldn't believe it. But that was, <laughs> I still have flashbacks, but it was just, oh, yeah. You know, that, yeah, that's something that's what dad's doing. It. <laughs> you yeah. give me something that you, they say, well, in fact, you're lucky they give you socks. He would have said, listen, all those years I paid your school fees. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The last question, what motivates you to get up in the morning? Um, one, I mean, various things, to be honest. But one thing is my goal. I have a goal. Those That goal or those goals that I have, because I have a goal and I have many goals, those are what motivate me to get up in the morning and say, hey, you've got to get up and go achieve your goals. Go take the day. Go bless people. Go touch people's lives. Because part of my goal is about supporting people as well. Right. So I feel like I have to get up and support do that get to talk to somebody support people especially back home i do a lot of work back home a lot of charity work there and so i have to get up for those people and i have to get up for my family my family is definitely the one key reason why i get up as well plus for myself yeah yep. i'm gonna get up and look after myself <laughs> yeah well, I, was, I went to bed at 2 30 last night and um and i was quite tired because I, I i was trying to record a session of hyperverse but that's a different story and then um i thought oh i've got I've got to get up. <laughs> so you motivated me to get out of bed this morning. I was la lazing in bed on a Sunday morning. Bit of a laugh. <laughs> Sorry, I brought, I, I, I didn't let you rest. Enjoy your Sunday morning in bed. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good stuff. All right, you, well, you've answered the 12 questions and people are probably wondering how we know each other. Um, I was searching around the internet and I found this video that popped up exposing a Ponzi scheme uh, called Hyperverse. And it... Um, I, I loved it. So uh, I reached out to you and said, I'd love to do a podcast with you and look at us now. We're doing a podcast. Yes. Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's it's good. Now. It's life is interesting, isn't it? You meet people, uh, you know, you just get to go around and you see, oh, I'm going to be there. There's somebody there that we have some kind of frequency that yeah. matches that we, we're both like in, in this thing that we, we just want to be on the right side of history, basically supporting people mm. in our own way. And it's funny how I was watching your videos. I was searching of these people as well. And I came across your videos. I was like, yeah. oh, this guy is doing exactly what I'm doing. Or oh, maybe mm -hmm. you're doing better than I do because you, you've been on it for a while. But I thought, wow, this would be great to get in contact. And then one other day I was watching your other video. I saw my on your intros, the way you do your intros. Yeah. I saw my video popped up. I was like, whoa, <laughs> what? He's got my video on his video. I didn't expect that. I was like, what? He's got my video on his video. Well, that so was funny because know. one of my images was on your video when I watched it the first time, and I thought, "Oh, cool!" Because it's always a bit of flattery when you see your artwork turning up on other people's um, channels. And I think now it's good. And I think um, what I've found there is a, a community of people out there that actually 
that just can't believe these Ponzi schemes and are literally, um, you know, trying to warn people. Um, I don't know if you saw the last one I just did, but it was about Mike Lucas. And yeah, I watched it. I watched it this afternoon. Oh, and it's it's crazy. And you're sort of thinking, I, first of all, I have to watch myself because if I think people fall for these scams, I think, oh, what are you doing? You're greedy. You're, you're trying to make money quick. You know, did you really think you're going to get three times your rewards? And then when I listen to Mike's story, I'm actually thinking, oh, my goodness, this guy really believed it. And he's yeah. at that age where he trusts people and they just, led him along by the hand, took $25,000 of him, and he has never taken any money out because he's loyal, and now, yeah. boom, gone. They're just going after vulnerable people. They, that, mm. Whoever that is, that person that he was naming, had seen this dude, he knows, oh, I'm going to miss an old dude, he's vulnerable, and he's, he's poor. If I just sweet talk him, show him that he can make three times three times his money, that's the idea. And then show him all this fancy stuff. Maybe do some fake, show some fake stuff, whatever. Show you look, I, reach, I retrieve some money. You know, I withdrew this yeah. money. Show them certain things and convince them. And of course, this man is desperate and he's poor. He's thinking, wow, well, my retirement money is so small. If there's this opportunity to multiply Probably. that by three, yeah, I'll, I'm going to go for it. What can I lose? And this guy is giving all these fancy things, but they don't explain to you all the bigger risks. They do yeah. like what that other guy does. Is he what was the other guy's name? Pinakinak or whatever, talking about. No, 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 no. Pinakinak. <laughs> That's how you call it. Pinakinak. <laughs> talking about the world as if it is us versus the world. How he's saying some some of the stuff I listen to him saying, I listen, I'm like, what is he talking about? He's yeah. making this thing about the world as if the world, the actual real world is what the Ponzi scheme is. He's talking, mm. telling people scare people of mortgages or whatever they're dropping oh because like, so um, that's what, similar thing yeah it's what they've used with this old person and poor people and as you know black people so convince you make you feel like this is a way out wow i don't have to do too much yeah. work and that's how they got people like that like that man it's a shame it's a really yeah. really big shame. and for his um what i picked up on him he said that um, it was only for 600 days. So it's a short term risk. It's not like they're saying he's thinking he's retirement money and, you know, it's not six years. He's probably thinking he's going to be dead in six years. Who knows? So, yeah. and the, yeah. the really thing that really got me because last week, Pinnicky, well, the, the yeah, last week, Pinnicky was talking about people's pension funds being a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> And you're thinking, oh, my goodness. So now that to me, if I was a pensioner, I'd be sitting there thinking, oh, my pension's not safe and the government's running yeah. a Ponzi scheme. What else should I invest in? And then yeah. here we go. <laughs> and I'm, and We've got the answer. Oh, uh, the answer for you. My foundation. Put the money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, listen, it's really sad when you watch these guys and the people who are there, the number of people they are, they are talking to and the people they are selling this to, uh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's 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 I feel sorry for the people because again, these people are poor people, they are desperate. So you have someone like that who talks the way they talk, they sweet talk them using the religion, pretend as if they are holy people or they are religious people, and they talk make put fear into you, make you fear the world, as in the world, the government is against you. I was talking to somebody, somebody who's friends with this army. Yeah, who's friends with those guys? He knows them. She, she, that lady also. I think her money is stuck now in her papers. That's how it's, now she's not happy with Des. Yeah, I, I spent people. ten hours of my life researching Des, and um, it was a hard case video because I had COVID two weeks earlier and I lost my voice. But I nice. opened up all the tabs as you do, and I've researched everything about this guy and and basically exposed him for the liar and the cheat he is. I couldn't yeah. hardly talk. But I recorded it anyway. So every time I flash back to my Des video, I think I should redo it all. But he... I think I saw that video. I watched the video. I was like, my guy, you need to rest your voice. Oh, right. <laughs> rest. Somebody said, oh, why don't you wait until your voice is better? And I go, I just can't help it. And I, um, even somebody, a week yeah. later, I still had a bad voice. But Yeah, I know somebody. This lady knows him very well. So I was searching him as well. I was researching him. Yep. Then when I was researching on his Facebook, I saw this photograph of this lady. I was like, whoa, you know, like you're scrolling. I saw the lady's photo. I stopped. I was like, whoa, I scrolled back down. I saw the, I know this lady. Yeah. 
Then as I was searching his Twitter. I saw the lady there as well. So I took screenshots and I sent it straight to the lady because I have a number. I messaged her straight. I said, hey, is this you? Yeah. yeah. Do you know this dude? And she started explaining. I was like, what's going on? He, he's then, the biggest I, fraud ever. He's amazing. Because yeah. even like he had this plaque that he was holding. And I found the original photo of the plaque he was holding up. And he had taken out this um, EMI Academy's logo off the front of it and blurred it all out. And then oh, made out he was a VIP, well, he was a VIP five in Hyperverse. Yeah. And he was trying to make out he got this plaque for doing that instead. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I saw a photograph of him when I was researching. He lay down on his, in his chair, up in at the Canary Wharf Tower. You know the way yeah. he says he... Oh, here's the person. floor on the top. In, in one yeah, of the... that's what he yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is, man. I don't know if you saw that. I put it on my video. He's laying down like this. He has a watch. He has his watch. Or yeah. somebody's some watch, I don't know. On From Thailand. The There's rolling has Thailand. It. Yeah, yeah. And he puts some fancy purse and bags laid yeah. out nicely on the chair, pretend as if he's sleeping. I was yeah. like, hold on a minute. Who does this? Yeah. Is that what? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> and the this? other, like, like he was, um, there were so many things that he was, um, like speaking in the houses of commerce. You know, he was making, yeah, again, Keith said he spoke in the House of Commerce and I'm going, hold on a minute. So finished up, it looked like he had, he's part of a business networking group and it looks like yeah. they did something and they probably asked him to speak, but he wasn't yeah. addressing parliament as no. they were alleging. And it yeah. was, and they, I couldn't even, I, I did find where he was going to be a guest speaker at some event, but it was just like, they must have an event center in there. Listen. The Houses of Parliament is a big place where you can actually visit. We all know that. You can book yeah. times to visit the place. And there are different, different um, halls, spaces in there where people can host events. Yeah. And people can go there. You can even meet with probably one of the MPs who probably help organize it. That doesn't necessarily mean you are in the Houses of Parliament. You're actually in the chamber addressing Parliament. Yeah. But as you know... That is what they do, isn't it? Any chance, any kind of thing, like I'm going to be at, at the parliament building <laughs> to do something, they put it out as I was addressing the parliament. Yeah. Bro, you don't yeah. address the parliament. You just went there on some kind of occasion. I have a friend who works there who have invited me there a few times to yeah. just go visit for tea or something. I just have not had the time to go. I could have gone there still and say, oh, look, I was at houses of parliament as well, posed with my suits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the real funny thing was when we found out that he doesn't have a floor, on the mm -hmm. on that uh fancy building he's in he only rents room 26 um mm -hmm. from regis which is a co-shared office space and i used to have them come along to my meeting so i was quite familiar with that company who, who does that they do it worldwide mm -hmm. but uh, and also the number one best-selling book you know that was a that was a that was a scream and only if you go down like i kept going down into the categories of amazon and then it was yeah. A, a specific category and he was one day he was 97th in that deep 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 category and then the next day he disappeared altogether and i think oh my goodness but that was a number one bestseller yeah <laughs> and i got it and it's interesting you mentioned that because this other lady i was talking to she was like oh he has number one selling book i said no he doesn't have number one selling book yes he does i said show me yeah this, this, this person was arguing on behalf of him yeah. Until when I started showing her certain things, and then she says, "Oh, okay, well, this guy, I don't know what has come off him now. What he's doing now, maybe he's changed." I said, "Well, look at this newspaper, though. He was running away from the newspaper. He they, they met him at Wembley. Yeah. He had to interview. He wouldn't speak to the newspaper. I said, why? If you're doing a good business, if your business yeah. is genuine, yeah, why wouldn't you be proud to talk to the newspapers? This is a big promotion for him. That's it's right. It's very big promotion. A newspaper coming to interview you about your business in the UK. Yeah, everybody reads the newspaper here." That's yeah. when she stopped talking. I said, you tell me, if you're doing business, would yeah. you not talk to the newspapers? Yeah. And then she, uh, then later on, after a few days of talking, me and her went back and forth for a few days, you know, this lady. Yeah. And then later on, she admitted that she put money in Hyperverse and that money is stuck. So wow. she's not happy that this guy is bringing Hyper Nation. I was like, hold on a minute. Two days ago, you were supporting this guy. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, because I've pressed, I've pushed, I've showed evidences, She's confessing to me now that, yeah, her money is talking hyperverse. And some people also under her team, her yeah. team, that's what they call it, team, the people they've recruited, money is talk. 
Yeah, I and think um, I think all the arguments because when I first started doing this, I get people telling me I didn't know and understand the blockchain, and and I didn't know, you know, I don't understand the bigger picture. And but every time they had that argument, it always the money seems to be the glue to whatever they are um, believing. And as soon as you put money around it, that clinches the deal that it must be true and factual because I've invested in it and it has to be true. So then it turns into hope and faith and belief. And those things, you can't chisel somebody's brain cell out of their head uh, and make logic with them because I've just, you know, I used to knock on people's doors when I was a Jehovah's Witness you know, and um, we used to people that we couldn't reason with. We would call we would call them people with deaf ears, yeah. and it, and it's like you're talking to people with deaf ears, and you think, why am I putting out all this energy in these videos? And to, to my joy, and you'll find it as well with your YouTube channel, is that people will give you a hard time because they don't like tall poppies in New Zealand and Australia. They shoot people down that stick their neck out because it's easy target practice, but yeah. after a while. The people that have lost all their money are now coming back going, I had a mate of mine go, hey, Danny, how can I, you help me get my money back from Hyperverse? I messaged him three months ago. I said, have you invested in Hyperverse? Because I heard he had nothing. And then all of a sudden, now he's asking for help. And I'm getting a lot of those sort of people coming back now. And I think yeah. people are so angry and pissed off that they're now starting to fight back. And they're realizing... Yeah. But it, you'd, you'd know yourself that there are systems uh, that cunning that if you speak out about hyperverse or hypernation, they can cut you out or chuck you out and then you're left with yeah. nothing. Imagine your bank, yeah. imagine your bank absolutely. doing that. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lady, there's another lady that she told me she was part of the, the, the Telegram group called Hypernation or something like that. When she started complaining, about her money because she hasn't received withdrawal money since she hasn't withdrew withdrawal money since uh, April. So yep. she started get, getting cross and angry and complaining and complaining. She said they kicked her out because they said she was being negative. Now this is her money, and she did not only put her money; her daughter's money is in there as well. Nice. So she got her daughter's money <sighs> and her money. And she's been hoping to re to get some money because they promised her to say, oh, if you put money, you get whatever percent daily. And then within three months or whatever, you withdraw money, you get your one X back. Mm -hmm. Then April, May, June, July, she didn't get her money back up till now because I spoke to her a few days ago. And then she says, I haven't received, I haven't been able to withdraw any money yet. Wow. So they kicked out because she was complaining. And I've seen lots of complaints. Today I was on the Twitter page. I saw people complaining, constantly asking questions. Because they sent, they they started, um, you know, the advertisement, the so not the announcement. Sorry, about the new executive or whatever I call them, marketing director or whatever nonsense. Oh uh, yeah, hold so, it, so global sales <laughs> representative, <laughs> and now he's got three Clooney's um, who are managers, <laughs> and this is part of the big announcements that they are uh, they're oh, coming out with. Hey, well, um, Afric lad, I'm um, we've done a good podcast. Um, I thank people for listening. I might stop the podcast now, but what I'd like to do is stream yeah. on YouTube right now and tell people what we've just done. Does that sound okay. like? Yep. So I'm going to click a button, and uh, we're connecting. Welcome. Uh, I have the African Africa. What is it? <laughs> Afric lad. Afric lad. We've just done a podcast together and we thought we'd plug into um, YouTube Live. Now, um, one thing when I watched your videos, um, you said, uh, I reckon we need to make a meme out of you. And, <laughs> and you said, scam, scam, scam. Now, you uh, pronounce well, it. You want me to say it again? Yes. My people, it says, scam. Scum, scum. <laughs> brilliant. Nah, that's brilliant, man. We're going to make a meme out of that. So uh, what we did is we had a podcast. So I asked um, Afrik Lad uh, 12 questions. So if you want to watch the podcast, go off to dehick.com, click on podcast. You can listen to our conversation. And obviously I'm going to produce the podcast as a video so you can watch the whole thing from A to Z. Uh, it was 30 five minutes long so it won't bore you to death but we were just having a good conversation about ponzi schemes and the mentality 
of people who get involved in them. And I was sort of saying to, can I call you Shells? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, Shells, that um, I sort of criticize people who get involved and think they're getting rich. And I, I really struggle with the fact that people don't, did they really think they were going to get three times their money? And I, I've been a bit critical, but then yesterday I put on a, a, a video about Mike Lucas and I interviewed him like we're doing a Zoom now. And I just couldn't, I could understand that he'd been led down the garden path. He'd been totally misled and they'd managed to siphon $25,000 out of his uh, pension yeah. fund. And not only that, the guy that led him down the garden path, he would have received at least 15% of that in reward money for introducing him. And it's basically daylight robbery. And I felt Absolutely. really sorry for Mike Lucas. So um, how did you feel about that, mate? Well, I saw the video. I was like, gosh, you see, this very old man who is just trying to get on with his life, here comes this young guy or whoever that person is, basically scammed him. I felt so bad for the money. I felt like this is disgusting really this is awful how can you treat somebody like that who is vulnerable how can you do that to another human being in fact yeah so for me i just feel like this is the reason why we're here and we're talking about these kind of things i feel like these kind of people need to be exposed need to be talked about we need to see their faces and shame them and obviously if there is any kind of I mean, there are laws around MLM, et cetera, but you you wonder whether there are things that the government can do more in our countries oh, to protect They're so people. slow. They're very slow. It's, it's yeah. crazy. And especially in Africa, like where I'm from, in Nigeria, they're just using the people. I, I watched somebody on live YouTube recently, two days ago. In fact, today they were on uh, selling all kinds of lies. And when I stepped in and made a comment, they blocked me. Yeah. I was just asking questions. I was only asking questions to say, hold on, how does this work? How can you get the money back? And somebody says, oh, this is not a scam. I didn't even use the word scam at that point. Yeah, I yeah. don't even use it. And then they said, this is not a scam. I said, hold on a minute. Do you want to tell me something? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> so I, it's, really, yeah. it's really sad. I do. I think um, I'm looking at, the, I've been trying to, I've li been listening to a lot of the terminology that they're using lately. And I believe that these guys have NLP training. And that's basically when they brainwash you. And just recently, Absolutely. I'm listening to a trend where Keith is actually talking about the platform. And he says, we're very lucky to be able to use the platform. And then I'm thinking, this platform they have is basically like the website. It's the mechanics. It's the money-making machine. Then he's been appointed this global sales representative, which I don't know what the hell that is, actually. And I don't know what job role he has and whether he has any clout, as I said in my video yesterday. <laughs> So I'm thinking, wonder if he's going to take ownership of Hypernation and he's going to make out that, you know, hyper fund and hyperverse. Uh, they're basically, because yeah. in his video, I'm just cutting up at the moment, he said yeah. that he's working for Hypernation and he's not working for hyperverse. So he's basically yeah. saying all the debt that is broken and happened he's not he's yeah. not able to fix that because he's not working for this he's appointed the oh hyper nation oh and oh I, my god so, i so wouldn't be surprised he, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he announces that he's going to take over hyper nation so this is what i feel i personally feel he actually uh, he's the main person behind that he's the one who owns that i don't think he's somebody else all these things they're talking about the corporates they he kept saying they he kept saying the corporate. I'm like, who yep. no corporates? And also he mentioned I watched a video of him saying he's worked many years on this on for this company. He's never been paid. He traveled here and there, he doesn't get paid, but he's doing it because he loves to do it. He's da da da. And I'm thinking, dude, who on earth will work for somebody else other than yourself that will go work for free every single day? A YouTuber. Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess so. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. We can. I'm actually in charge of the promotion of um hyperverse and hyper hyper fund, whatever it is. <laughs> the... Crazy. Yeah, you're right. Imagine. That's right. Imagine if, you, yeah. if you have to travel, even if even if riding your bicycle every day to work or driving your car, petrol oh. or taking public transport, would you do that every day for a year or two? If it's not for your own business, if it's yeah. your business, I can see why you would do that because it's your business you're developing. But if somebody else is, so when he's talking, and I'm reading along the lines, and this is the tricky part. A lot of the people they're dealing with don't think like this. They don't think outside it, but they don't read along the lines and think, hold on. They don't use logic around it to say, well, hold on, why? 
And also when they're saying they don't own the company, they're just only working for the company, but the way they talk, they, they're advocating for the company. To me, it's like, it's your company. For me, what I'm hearing is like, oh, if, if it's not yours, yeah. why is the owner not talking the way you're talking? Why is that other person hiding their face and hands or whatever? Why? What's the problem? No, no one seems to question that. I mean, I mean, really. <laughs> um, something else interesting too, and I reckon this is what's happened between Kalpish and uh, Keith. And I reckon that Kalpish was actually brought up, maybe uh, brought in like some sort of business coach or some business mentor or a mindset coach of some sort. And they've obviously had a relationship in the past, but I reckon mm. Kalpish actually saw the floor and I reckon he did defraud. And I do think he stole all the money from Hypernation, Hyperverse. So, and then I reckon yeah. that's, he's, if Keith's the, the, the lead guy, and then Kalpish has taken all the money. Why don't we know what's happened between Kalpish and um, Keith? Keith. That would make sense. I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I don't know if you, you the video you, you edited recently, you posted recently, you see, you noticed Keith, um, Keith was saying the branches fell off. When the heavy wind came, we caught some branches. I was going like this. <laughs> <laughs> you shaking the branch. So yeah. I wonder whether that's that's part of what he's referring to that. Or oh, when it was we had a big issue, some people fell out, da, 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 but it's all good. Yeah. I wonder whether that's, he's trying to, you know, bring talk about that to say, hang on a minute, this guy has left. Because clearly there's a there's a, there's an issue there. There's something wrong there. That's why yeah. um what Kalpesh left. So definitely that's what he was trying to refer to. And the way he was talking for that whole Zoom meeting, that video, you can clearly see if it's not your business. You don't yeah. talk that kind of. You don't, you're not that passionate. He's not an advocate. Or yes, okay, it's executive sales That's director. Right. Or yeah, but you're not. It's not really your business. It's not really your company. But you're talking like it's your company and and all these boot leakers or whatever I call it. I call it. Hey, God bless you. Hey, hey, yes, my brother. Yeah. Hey. I'm like, come on, people, stop this nonsense. <laughs> the uh, interesting thing I noticed as well is that um, he was telling us stuff like we all knew it, and I'm listening to it going, I've never heard this before. And why you, you know, he's obviously they've had big meetings and a lot of discussion going around. And, you know, probably only three or five percent of people actually know that discussion, but he's addressing the other 95 plus people, telling them like they know all these stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really it's, weird. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. All of them that I've listened to, you can tell, like you mentioned earlier on, that they they've all practiced certain type of way to talk. Yeah. Certain words they use, the language, like obviously religion. They all, I, I've seen people quoting scriptures. I'm like, what yeah. is going on? Yeah. They say, hallelujah, quoting scriptures, telling people all kinds of things. And they use specific kind of words. Yeah. Obviously, they talk about- Light gets brighter. Uh, multiple, whatever, streams of income, whatever I call yeah. it, financial stability, wealth, generational wealth, all those kind of things. And they're using community, they're using family, they're using all kinds of things. Yeah. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. No, you're right. And also they talk about fear. And if you, I, I used to, I, I do know the Bible quite well, but they talk in the last days, how there'll be a whole lot of doom and gloom. And they, they're talking the same stuff that's going to happen in these last days are actually, mm -hmm. you know, the, the fear of the, the, you know, like there's a video from Mr. H just 24 hours ago, and he's talking about the comment communists, you know, oh, yeah, the communist area. and that's what they want to bring in. They want us to go back to Russia and be like communist countries or well, people. And it's crazy. It's interesting because this other friend I was talking to that knows these guys, as in there's army, uh, Susan. You know, I know Susan. I told yeah, I, I yeah, I know. Susan. I've been helping people fill out her if 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 CA uh, complaint form because she's um, broken her. <laughs> Somebody's been trying to prosecute her and I've been helping them fill out the form. Oh, ooh, Susan. Okay, I know yeah. Susan. Yeah, I know her family. Yep. And so this other lady I was talking to knows Susan as well. When I, I've, I've, when I interrogated a little bit, she, she told me she knows Susan. She knows Desami and stuff like that. And then she showed me one of her sessions. She did a YouTube um Zoom session. She did. And then she was talking the same way those other guys talk. And I said to her, "Listen, it's not like you all have been trained by the same person. What's going on?" That's right. You were yep. saying the same. She said, no, da, da, da. I said, listen, what yep. you're saying there is the same thing. I heard this other person said over there and that person said over there. Yeah. And then this is claiming how they want to make 
whatever, 1 million millionaires or whatever, 10,000 millionaires in, in 10 years, something like that. They have this yeah. kind of thing. Like, young, long lady. But, uh, yeah. you have to, you've been in this thing for God knows how long. You've not become a millionaire yet. How are you going to make these people become millionaires? Yeah. Apart from that, you know for sure that this is not as easy as what as the way you guys are making it. It's yeah. not easy to make money. It's not, mm. You're not going to become a millionaire overnight. You're not going to become a rich person in in six months or one year, yeah. unless if you're going to win a lottery, yeah, or maybe your parents left you some huge money somewhere. I don't see how that works. Mm. Anyway, I kept talking to this lady, and then some of the things she made she mentioned. Um, I'm like, come on, you better stop this. I said, please stop. Especially you're dealing with your own people, black people, Africans. Yeah. How many of these Africans have the technology, have the knowledge, can even read and write properly that yeah. you're talking to? That's that amazing. understands this. Yeah, I've I've seen them in their meetings, and I've got people who have got cell phones trying to buy crypto, so they can buy you know manage their crypto wallets on their cell phone because they don't have computers, and <laughs> they're gone. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, and that and the, it press the button, and that's like Mike Lucas's. He was he was he, he, held by the hand to invest, but never held by the hand to take his money out. Exactly, and, and that's exactly what happens. They, it's easier to put the money in. They show you all kind of secret, all kind of ways. They'll help you every mm -hmm. step of the way to put your money in. Now, yep. to get the money out, it becomes a problem. They'll say, oh, go to your upline. Oh, talk to this person. Oh, don't worry. Oh, okay, wait, be That's patient. Right. They're telling you to be patient. And the more you ask, they see that, oh, you're negative. They said, oh, we need you to be positive. We need positive mindset. It's an investment. You got to understand it. Anything you're investing, you lose the money. You should be, you, you, it's possible that you lose money Hold on a minute. You were not talking like that at the beginning, though. When you were trying to get them in, you were not talking of all these big risks. Yeah. Instead, they were saying it's the same thing like a real estate. You can lose money in real estate. Da 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 da. And yes, there is truth that you can lose money in real estate. But you, I don't see why you're comparing that with what you're doing because what you're doing is nothing. You're just faking people. What you're doing is all fake. There's nothing behind. There. There's nothing they're gonna gain. You know that. Well, Penny Dark was going on about people's pension funds and how that. <laughs> How the uh, the government's running a Ponzi scheme with paying people their pension funds, but I'm going well. They're still getting the money, mate. They're still getting paid their pensions, so it hasn't stopped yet. And I'm sure that the government, if they do do that, will, the whole world, all the the blockchain will stop running, and the world's going to be that much doomed. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. This other lady was arguing me, saying she was saying because we're talking about the bank, the fiat money and crypto, whatever they're doing. Well, the banks they're using your money to do business. If you sometimes want your money in the bank, if you want to take like 10,000, 20,000, you need to go through all these questions and answers for them to give you your money. I don't want that. I want this freedom. I can get this and that. Yeah. And I said, but hold on a minute. People have been waiting to retrieve, withdraw their one, their own money they put in this hyperverse thing since April. They <laughs> haven't got it back. Yeah. Who is going to chase them? I say, at least you can go to the bank and argue that it's my money. Yeah. And the money they give it to you. If I put 10,000, Mm. I left it there for one year. Even if the bank used that money to do business, yep. when I come back a year later, my 10000 will be there. Even if it doesn't give me interest. Let's say yep. the bank did not give me Mate, no you've listened to my, You've listened to my YouTube channel. I've used that exact scenario. <laughs> and then the other bit I added into it was I, I, I do drop shipping, right? So I sell $3,000 worth of products. I make $1,000. I go put it in the bank. And now I have $11,000 in the bank. So $11,000... I had 10, I've had a 10% increase in it's savings. Crazy. And that's it's how it works. Yeah, the people are talking about real estate. They're arguing this stuff. And I said to them, okay, I have properties right now. They pay me rent for those. Yep. For the last five, six years, I have rent coming in. Yep. And my property hasn't depreciated to the point where I'm going to lose it. You know what I mean? It's still there. It's still growing in interest. Yep. And I get rent paid, like rent paid every time. And that when I'm using that to reinvest into something else, into another building. Then you don't get an IOU? Rent. You don't get a piece of paper with an IOU on it telling you that you're, you've got so many HU in the bank and you'll be <laughs> fine? And you go to the bank and you go, can I use my IOU? <laughs> and they go, this isn't worth the Absolutely. paper it's printed on. <laughs> Absolutely no. No. Oh. What I've got is buildings with proper agreements made me and my tenants we sign the agreement yeah take the paper i take my bit 
when the year round, if you pay my money or whatever, or however we've agreed, if it's monthly, you pay my money monthly. That's it. You carry on living there. I do my business straightforward. You don't have to go recommend anybody else <laughs> for you to get yeah. anything. I think I think the timing for all this is quite interesting. I had a big rant on my last video because Keith was actually giving me an insult about my suit that I was wearing, and that he was giving me a hard time in a LinkedIn chat because I rent a house. And then he he's talked about me quite a few times. I don't know why, but they seem to <laughs> criticize people that aren't wealthy. And I oh. think, you know, when you get wealth, it's, I think everyone would like to have unlimited, no money worries. And a, yeah. they're selling a passive income. I, I kind of get people want that, but that's not what they're offering to deliver, not what they're delivering. But I mean, you don't have to be wealthy. I mean, I've traveled poor country. I've been to 35 countries. I went to, um, India, and you'd go meet a tuk -tuk, well, a taxi driver, and you'd take you back to his family, and you'd have dinner with the family. And the first thing that they hand you when you walk in is normally their kid, and they go, "This is my son." And the family mm -hmm. qualities that people have that don't have the money is exactly. something that these rich, wealthy people who think money is the the true to happiness. Yeah, it, you know they miss the boat. I mean. Would you really think you're better off sitting on a pile of money knowing that you've scammed your friends and your family out of their money to get your wealth? Absolutely not. Listen, even for me anyway, even apart from scam, let's say I, I made... Scam. 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 Yeah. One more, one more. Scam. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Now we're talking. Listen, apart from scamming people, what I'm trying to say is even when I make that big money, I mean, right now, I mean, I don't make that big money, but what I'm making yeah. is enough to support me and my family. And from that, I support other people because I don't feel comfortable having that. Yeah. And I know people who are struggling, genuinely struggling, and I'm just going to go there and show up, especially when I go back home in Sierra Leone. In England, not so much because here, most, most people got more money than me. Yeah. And relatively, people live, you, you, I mean, there are people on the street still begging or whatever, but what I'm saying is, the basics, we have the basics here in the UK compared yep. to when I go home. When I go home in Sierra Leone, in Africa, there is far less and you meet mm. far more people struggling there. You're not going to so, get a, a Lamborghini? You're not <laughs> taking a Lamborghini home and, and a gold necklace? No way. I don't know. What, if you check so you're going to call yourself AKA, what's your handle? AKA African lad, crypto African king. Lad. African AKA lad. AKA African lad in the building. Yeah. Your boy, your boy in the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got to get my hat. Got, oh yes, definitely got, get it. I've got, got my hat. That's dope. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I'll do the AKA, no neck thing. AKA Afric Lad and AKA. Yeah, I'm, I'm um Mr. Dot Com now. There was a dot com. <laughs> road. Sorry, mate. Yeah, road. Got it. I still got it. So, for me, I don't feel comfortable going home, hanging out with friends or family or just people. Mm. And I'm the one who's dressed up and showing up. And then obviously Saturday not criticize them because they are poor. You yeah. know what I mean? Or trying to, it doesn't make no sense. What's the point? What are you going to gain? You already mm. have more anyway. Why do you not have to laugh at people? Why do you want to take the make out of people because they are poor? It don't make no sense, really. If you really genuinely think you have money anyway, you should help people yeah. instead of laughing at them. Help them because that's what it's about, isn't it? And also, also that's what they're preaching. That they are helping people. Yeah, they help That's themselves. If you're really helping, if it's true, you're truly. Anyway, it's rubbish. We all know it's rubbish. So don't. Yeah, really... no, they're not. They're not <laughs> nice people. I think if I was rich, though, I will. I'd, I can't say the word, but hopefully you'll help figure it out. If I was rich, I'd like to be a pathanthus. What do they call those? Um, do you know the word I mean? Pathanth. A person that's so rich that he gives his money away, where he sets up. It's oh, um, pathanthus. No, what you mean? Um, Oh, I know the word you're talking. About. I just it just go off my head now. But if you're rich and you give all your money, yeah, uh, but you do good with your money. I mean, we'll that's why I remember the actual word for I it, was yeah. crying out to Keith Williams because I know he might say he hasn't been paid by the company, but he he misses the point that he's received shitloads of money, and he's he. There's no doubt in my mind he's a multi-millionaire, and he's. I've even heard of people that have gone around with cash to his house and he set them up accounts for them and then he doesn't know what to do with the cash that's what i heard from people and i yeah. i know that because i had one lady telling me that one guy met her at a park bench and she gave him 1500 dollars us and then wow. 
he couldn't set up something. He come back and got two more hundred dollars US out of her. And I've forgotten what the totals was, but anyway, she was got she was going to the police and trying to stop this guy. She didn't even have his phone number or anything, you know. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. The word just came to my head. Sorry to cut yeah. you there. Go, go, go. Philanthropist. Is that what we're looking for? Philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> Let's write it down. Well, see, I can't even pronounce it, so I can't say it back. But yeah, that's where I'd want to be. Um, but you think, you know, so with people like that, Mike Lucas guy, you know, surely if you had that much money, and let's say you've got, let's just say Keith's got five million. Which I'm, mm. I'm pretty sure he's got more than that. Probably yeah. got more than that, yeah. Because yeah, peeling off twenty five thousand dollars back and giving it back yeah. to somebody that would show yeah, would. a true character of a person, even if he is a dirty rotten scammer. Yeah, I was checking when I was. I heard Keith was talking about how many people they have. He said they have close to a million people. On One point five, I heard. It changes all the time. There you go. So even if let's say one million people signed up. Each of those people paid something like what, three hundred to buy to buy. I'm on the calculator, mate. I've got calculator. Yeah, there you go. I like that. <laughs> All so right, so three hundred dollars. Now, how many zeros yeah. is a million? It's six, isn't it? Or seven? Yeah, six zeros. Okay. Yeah, six zeros. One, million, yeah. two, three, four, five, six equals. So I think that's three billion. Okay, so three. What is that? I, I got yeah. one, uh, two, three. One, two, three, four. So, yeah, so it should be about, yeah, about that. Because I worked so, out the $4 billion scam. About 1.5. Uh, well, it's $4.5 billion Because Kalpesh Patel actually yeah. said to Keith Williams, um, yeah. well, he actually said in a chat, where has the $4 billion gone? Who's got that? So that was something. I've actually been chatting. He replied to me after all this time, Kalpesh Patel replied to me, and that was when I sent him a message basically saying, how stupid is Keith Williams putting a uh, a, um, a target on his forehead, telling everyone that he's the global sales representative for Hypernation, the biggest scam in the world. And what was he thinking? He wrote back and he said, um, basically, he was saying that he, he's lying to people. And I'm going, aren't you <laughs> lying as well? But they're all the same. And it's like... But he didn't push <laughs> we we dot global down my throat uh, or the other yeah. one that I'm promoting. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. So yeah, I mean, just to go back to the numbers, if they had sold this thing the pa the package or to sign up for three hundred dollars per person, if you yep. multiply that by one fifty one million five hundred, that's about four hundred and fifty million. Wow, easily. And you and I know people obviously invested more. Yes. So imagine just to buy in to say, okay, this is me signing up. This is my three hundred dollars. That makes yep. them four hundred and fifty million easily. So yeah. originally there was five VIP fives, and Keith Williams and Brenda Chanda, Bitcoin Rodney, and I think Clayton Ford. All those guys were there way at the very start. So technically speaking, all the money that we just talked about, they would get a percentage of that in rewards. Yeah. Yeah. So that that if it's four billion dollars. That's freaking shitloads of corny. <laughs> Imagine that. And then people obviously buy all these things. They said you have to add more money to get to this next stage. Put this and people put 10 grand, 30K, whatever that is, 50K, yeah. 100K. Imagine how many millions of people have been. No wonder they're well, all over the place. They're in Dubai. Well, they're most having this most people put more than the 300 and eight, like uh, just using Mike Lucas, 25 grand. And honestly, uh, yeah. I, I was speaking to a VIP five and he actually helps me. He feeds me the videos. So he's still involved. And uh, they blocked New Zealand from getting access to the hyper community. Anyway, I'm still getting the videos because I've got people on the inside who hate this people crap. Which I love. Because other people are not happy with them anyway. And some people, I think also, some people are stuck in this system. They're thinking, okay, I can't get out now. I'm stuck in this. Either because they all, they also hoping they're going to make money or yep. they think if I leave now, this guy's going to come after me. That kind of funny, funny stuff is all happening. Maybe that's why some people are not even leaving because this guy that I know, this lady whom I told you her money is stuck in hyperverse, She's friends with them. She works with them. She's she's recruiting people. She recruited people into Hyperverse. She putting people into PLCU, all this Novotech, and then places. But now because her money is stuck, and some of uh, these other people on Manifa, their money is uh, stocked as well. She got cross. She sent me she sent me screens of her complaining, challenging them, and go cross with them to say why are they bringing up 
hyper nation when yeah. they haven't sorted out people in hyperverse yet. So she wasn't happy with that. So she was complaining, blah, blah, blah. I said to her, well, maybe this is time for you so, to actually dissociate yourself from these guys and call them out. Yeah. You've been part of that. You know them well. It's your opportunity to at least change and make a difference. So I think she's still thinking about it. I said, you need to stop. I because uh, I know her well. I said, I know her very. I got her telephone number. I contact. I told. I spoke to her over the phone yeah. for two, three days. We're talking. They're Every just was, too far invested, aren't they? Yeah, they're too much, too far into it. And then, of course, to get out now, it becomes tricky, you know. And I said to her, all the people that are underneath you that you call your team, maybe you should give them proper advice now for to tell them the truth that this thing is rubbish. You know what it's she's rubbish. not doing? No. She's not talking about the elephant in the room. <laughs> yes, let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. Uh, I think I don't know. I'm trying to look at the psychology of it. I'm trying to think if you would, if you were, if you had all the power, like what would you do to stop this? Like what would you do to stop hibernation? I mean, obviously, get Keith Williams out of it. Yeah, well, all everybody, what happened is, first of all, we'll pass a law, because don't forget that these kind of things, you probably got more control in your country where you're in charge. Whatever is happening yeah. elsewhere, you may not be able to control that. But That's in right. my country, I will pass strict laws to say any form of that, that kind of stuff, that's name or whatever that is that you're doing, any form around it is illegal completely. Yep. Like Take the internet off them. Yeah. And then, and then actively go after these people. If somebody complained about them, go after them, make it quicker, make it a quicker process. You yeah. understand? Make it a quicker process and make it slow because people get fed up. People might think if I complain to the government or to whoever the agencies are, it's going to take maybe forever for them to get to these people anyway. So the money's going. And I have to go through and fill all these forms and stuff. I don't want to go through that. You, don't, you want to make like an emergency thing. People ring that specific number dedicated to where you can call yeah. and you have some secret police or wherever that turned up to say, yes, give me their details. Next time they are, next minute, if you know the address, we're going to be at their address. Or why don't have... they do that? Because that would be, that's so, to me, I'm thinking that's so simple. I mean, it's either illegal or legal to promote a Ponzi yeah, scheme. But, and if you, yeah, but if you look at Hyperverse and you look yeah. at these people in these Zoom meetings, how can they deny that they're not involved in a Ponzi scheme? Exactly. But you see now, I was reading here in the UK, the laws around this MLM, et cetera. Now, they clearly stated that if you're doing MLM or pyramid scheme, especially pyramid, that's how they put the pyramid scheme, is illegal. However, if you're doing MLM, if the MLM involves selling a product, that's a product actually you're selling, yeah. it's, it's illegal. That's what they're trying to say. Anyway. But if it isn't, so the basic, that thing gives you the gray area, isn't it? To say, well, the MLM, if you're selling something, it's fine, but if you're not selling anything, then it is. So what these guys would do, they will pretend as if there's something they are selling, in it? They will yeah. say, look, we have a product that we're selling, we're selling this, we're selling that. So they yeah. get around it in that form, in that way. Yeah. So that's, what, that's right. what I mean by it. You have to make it clear that, listen, if you're doing MLM, it's illegal, forget it. If you're doing, because they know, according to what I was reading, they know that most mm. people in MLM are going to lose. Yeah. They know they've said most people will lose, and they know that it comes down to you recruiting somebody else in yeah. order for you to make the money. So if you know that if you're an authority, just put just say full stop, boom. And also the other thing I think I could do, they could tank. They, they should do like sorry, a big, a big tank. <laughs> yes, they should buy them like, up. <laughs> yeah, you know what they did for the the gambling and cigarettes. That if I'm for the gambling here in the UK, I don't know for New Zealand, in the UK, they have forced these guys to actually put out statements, advertisements on TV and everywhere to say gambling is not for everyone. Mm. Like they forced them because a lot of people are losing money to go through gambling and is causing all kinds of mental issues, etc. Right. Because there were no patients or whatever. So TV advert promoting that Ponzi schemes are dangerous. Like cyber crime, yeah, I mean. yeah. awareness. Because yeah. that's, that's what I believe that we're doing. Like, I think that's the mission is, you know, uh, the internet is great. I mean, I get every now and again, I get people complaining about my videos, trying to get them offline. And I'm thinking, you know, there's so much red tape, you know, as if these guys are going to prosecute, Keith Williams is going to send me a legal letter to tell me that um, I've 
defamed his his good name. I'm looking forward to that letter because that's the first thing I'm going to get printed and framed. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's just disgusting that they um, they get away with it. But um, then often YouTube does remove some of my content and you think, why can't you look at this and yeah. see that these guys are crook and leave it out there? Because that's what I'm trying to do is name and shame these people, make yeah. people aware. Yeah. That's because of all this gray area that is around it, you know what I mean? And like, mm. that's why I, that's why I said, as a government, they need to step in and put this as a proper advert. Force all the like now we have BBC for here, for example, here. Yeah, they should put it on BBC because that one the government don't have to pay for that. They would yep. because they would, if you put it on the other private TV, they might say we is tax or whatever we're paying. But we already pay BBC anyway. We pay TV license, so yeah. why not put on BBC every day or every four or five times a day? They'll pull it up to see yeah. this. Kid. I think it's a great idea. I do think awareness is everything. I mean, I feel for people like Mike Lucas. He's a prime, prime example of the people they're targeting. And I, I remember being a Jehovah's Witness, right? And I used to knock on people's doors, and you'd knock on their door and they say they're not interested. And you'd go, "Well, is it Jehovah's Witnesses you're not interested in, or is it religion?" And they would go, "Oh, religion." And then you'd go. I understand that because religion's responsible for a lot of the mayhem in the world at the moment. Wouldn't you agree? And before, before they knew it, they were having a conversation with you. And then you'd say, you "I'd go. like to share a scripture with you," and you'd go off. And but then I think some people would just slam the door and tell us to f off. But yeah. uh, we would walk to the next house and the next mm -hmm. house until you found someone that would listen to your message. And that's what mm -hmm. these guys have discovered: that the the people that sixty years above. The people that yep. are, are trying to build their their pensions, they're going yep. after these guys. The people that don't understand crypto but listen to the advice of a friend, yeah, you know, yep. and they just and they're just they, they know the demographics. They're not going to these crypto geniuses. No, who, they ain't you know? go there. Listen, that's how I was saying to somebody. I say, okay, if there's a promise in three x four x, I wonder why. Those big rich guys are not doing that. They're not going for to three x their monies because surely, yeah. surely Elon Musk would like to three x his money, or Richard Branson, or yeah. all the other Spanish people, Bill Gates. They surely would like to three x their money. I know they got a lot of money, but they're yeah. still working for money. So why are they not three x in their money? Do you watch Shark yeah. Tank? Uh, Shark Tank. Yeah. Yeah. Can exactly. you imagine? There was a guy that went on there trying to promote a Ponzi scheme. And it was a, a reward card. They just shot him down. And I can imagine yeah. Keith Williams going to Shark yeah. Tank and pinching yeah. Hyper Nation. Yeah. <laughs> or, or let's even go over here. We call it over here. We call it um, Dragon's, Dragon's Den. Den. I watch let's all of them. Go to the Dragon's Den. Yep. And go tell them you can three x your money and see what they will say. This is what I don't understand. That's why sometimes I'm thinking people yeah. who live here in particular in the UK who are exposed. Why are they not researching? Why are they not asking these questions? Yeah. What's going on? Again, it comes down to desperation. When people are desperate, they are poor. Yeah. Sometimes they see one thing, they're like, oh, yes, and they jump in it. And that's what they're doing in Africa. They go to Africa and right now. They're poor because that guy, Des, is half Ghanaian. He's Ghanaian. Yeah. Well, he's actually Ghanaian. He's he Ghanaian, didn't he? Yeah, and he grew up here. So he goes to Ghana. He did a world tour. Him. He went to world oh, yeah. tour, but he only went to nine countries. <laughs> <laughs> that's the world tour. doesn't the world is. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so yeah. yeah it goes to ghana south africa nigeria uh -huh. and the and recruiting people there and these people i saw some people talking to some guys in ghana and nigeria i was like what and as we know i have been to church as well i used to be in church in fact yep. i used to sing in church and i know how people you can never go now if you like do you want to do we sing along yeah yeah we can sing I, some. I, I, I can <laughs> i can get some music going. are you ready to sing <laughs> Well, we're singing Ponzi. Ponzi, <laughs> Ponzi, Ponzi, yeah. Ponzi. Oh, Ponzi. Give scheme. me your money. We'll give you an eye. Beware of Ponzi schemes. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right, scams. Scams. Scam. Scam. Oh, we definitely got to make Scam. a meme out of that, mate. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think um, I think the timing for these Ponzi schemes is quite good, though, because theoretically everyone's been on Zoom for, for too long because of COVID. Um, people yeah. mentally are exhausted. Um, people are tired. I mean, I've had a real big change in my business, um, you know, and I've had to sort of start over again and I'm, you know, and it's depressing, you know, and then somebody offers you an opportunity to escape it all. Boom. And you're in and you're thinking, yeah. So I just That's think, that, you know, and there's, there's some quotes in the Bible that says um, the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. And, 
I think the <laughs> truth of the matter is they're stealing from the poor and giving to the rich. And um, it's just, I just can't stand it. Because I'm... I know something. Eh? Go on, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, because of my, like, I, um, I've i lost two people in my family um, to suicide, you see. And wow. they were, wow. because they're so, wow. thank you, they were so wound up in the religion. And it played a big impact in their life that they felt like they couldn't live up to the expectations. And so they, they finished their life. But I think there's a lot of people out there, because I believe that these Ponzi schemes, you're playing with people's money. And I reckon the the effects of it all could actually push people over the edge. So it's Absolutely. more than just fooling people out of their money. It's affecting people's mental health. And yes, I think that... Religion, I think it was one of your videos as well. There was a lady who mentioned how, excuse <clears> me, <throat> there was a lady who mentioned how she invested, I think, 100K. Yeah. And she was, she said she loaned the money. She loaned it from a bank. So she's paying the loan. Oh, with interest. terrible. So she was asking... These people, Susan, Susan, I think it was Susan's training she was doing and this. She was asking them to say, how can I get just my money back? Just the money, the 100K that I put, I want that money back. She says she's having mental issues. I was like, that's exactly what's going to happen. What's happening to loads of people who put money in. Yeah, they, It's mentally draining and it's going to cause all kinds of mental issues. Yeah, I know someone who I used to live with who puts money into this crypto situation. Not not this hyperverse. I think. Well, I don't know if she was if she was in the hyperverse thing. Something hyper. She money to, sorry. Something yeah, hyper. She, There's a lot of hype going on. I think she became hyper after where she put the money in. <laughs> hyper so sick. Put money in. <laughs> hyper sick. That's the one. What I'm trying I'm to say. Is, she put, <laughs> hyper we can do a hyper that, podcast. <laughs> I think that's the word. Is hyper stressed because what happened is every day. This, this uh, lady will look at the phone morning, evening, night, looking at the phone. As soon as you wake up in the morning on the phone to check whether money's gone up, whether it's gone this, whether it's gone that. Yeah. And I keep mm. saying, what's going on? Mm. Well, send her, and then she's always in these meetings talking to one guy called Dwayne, talking to this other guy. They're telling her, they're telling him this, putting money. And they, that's when I found out about the PLCU, putting money in PLCU, the farm here, farm there. And they constantly checking, checking, checking all day, every day. <laughs> And you can see that this person yeah. is, she's not, she can't, she's not rest. She, what's the word? She's for she's rest. On rest. <clears throat> she can't relax. She's not relaxed because constantly on the phone. Yeah, high blood pressure. See, yeah, checking to see whether the, the money has gone up or it's gone down. Who, then, and that's just constant. That's like, wow, you don't need, you don't want to be in this kind of situation. It's too stressful. That's mentally yeah. drained. That doesn't affect your mental stability. Yeah. Why does life have to be so complicated? Yeah, I don't have to wake wake up early and check, whoa, is my house value going down? Or yeah. is my farm thing is going down? I don't have to. I don't I don't put myself under that stress. It, it doesn't even occur to me to stress like that because yeah. it's there. I'm not desperate about it going up tomorrow morning or going down. But with this thing, because the way they've sold it to them to say, oh, in three months you make this money. Oh, it will go up. And so what happened now? They're constantly on watching, looking and scared. And this person yeah. has put lots of money, money they have saved, to do something else, they put all the money because the sister convinced them to put it because the sister won some money. Yeah. Need to be able to use that to advertise, sell the use it. And the, because the sister withdrew tiny money and said, look, I paid for this. I got some money from it. That convinced this person to put in through a friend mm -hmm. who works with these guys up there. And and then she put in big money. Yeah. Nothing is coming nah. back, according to I, them. I, I, I used to do quite well for myself. Well, I had built up a business, built a house in the country and three years in living in the house, then totally finished the house. And then my wife said she wanted a divorce. And I, I knew we weren't that great, but I didn't think we were a divorce material. And yeah. uh, so then I went off to the doctor and I said, look, you know, wife wants a divorce. My whole body is aching. And, um, and he goes, I'll go home and sleep it off. Anyway, at three o'clock in the afternoon, I had to call a, well, I asked my wife to call an ambulance because I was in that much pain and she refused to anyway, long story short, I had a burst appendix and I could have died, but then I lost my house. I lost my marriage. I lost basically everything I built the last whatever uh, years building up. And I did wow. keep my business, but my business, my ex-wife was trying to kill the business because she thought I was worth $2 million. So I went wow. and I got my, my business valued at $37,000 and said, I'll give you $20,000 if you let me keep the business. But I, 
I spent two weeks in hospital, right? And I was every half hour I was fighting for my life, literally. And long story short, I survived. But the thing is, my house in the country, I lost. My uh, my wife, I lost, obviously. And I started off with nothing. And then I think when you have a health scare, you actually get your priorities right because it's number one. I mean, and friends and family are most important. Now I could, I'm I'm not. I'm pretty smart. If I wanted to, I could get into a Ponzi scheme and I could probably make enough money to make it worth my time. But uh, you believe in I, Dubai right now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, but you know, why, why? I mean, like you said, the stress of getting that money and then you can lose it all in a heartbeat. You could, you know, these guys can have all this money and then all of a sudden they could have a, a stroke. I don't know. A good friend of mine's had a stroke. He's a lovely guy. And now he's, you know, we go see him, we give him videos, support, and, um, you know, but his life's changed dramatically. Now, does he care? He never has, but does he care about how much money he's got in the bank? Does he care about his big flash house, his big flash car? He, he's trying to stay aw alive and he's, he's trying to get alive, healthy again. Yeah. 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 That's what's important. Staying alive. Listen, I learned a good lesson of, about that recently as well. My cousin died recently, a few weeks ago. Sorry. Of cancer. So this is a guy, good looking, huge, tall, it's fine carrying on his business. He also have properties back home and he's got property here as well. Yep. He's doing well. And next minute, boom, he was diagnosed with cancer. Within the space of, well, two or three months, he, he, was, he became smaller than me. He was thin. Wow. When I went to the, see him, I couldn't believe it was him laying there, couldn't move, couldn't speak, nothing. His body's gone down because they took him. So he, when they diagnosed him, he was already stage four. So he was yep. like gone, really. And they took him to the hospice. I went to see him. Uh, I couldn't believe it. Then I just sat there thinking, wow, human being, this man. This guy right now, he doesn't even care about none of those things that he has. Yeah. None of that. All he wants right now is to get out of this bed go with his children and his wife and live happily he just taught me a lesson to say hey keep doing good keep obviously enjoy your life but do good because at the end of the day all this stuff that you're fighting to get or wherever yeah what really matters is this moment your health your family and what you've done in terms of legacy how you people remember yep. you too right that's what you want you don't want to be i mean some people don't care to be anybody i personally don't want to be on earth or even when i'm gone people started saying oh he duped me with some money he owes me money he scammed me on this thing he scammed me on that all these things yep. that you've built is based on scam yep. how is your children going to feel when they see all of that yeah how are your children he's the biggest scammer in the world <laughs> my, my <laughs> people, are see all of that people are coming after my my dad yeah. for this they're not going to be proud and they probably thinking people are going to come after us as well He's just crazy. Yeah. I know oh, it's anyway. very sad. Hey, um, I'm gonna um have breakfast, so I'm gonna um I'm gonna stop the live streaming. So people that have been watching us, um, we are gonna I've recorded a podcast with the Afric lad. Is that right? Yes. And he's gonna say gonna, three. Gonna you remember? Yeah, I know. I've got it written here, <laughs> and I can as long as I can pronounce it. I, the way I remembered it is a freak, a freak lad. Africa lad. Afric lad. This is not a freak lad. This is Africa lad. Africa lad. Oh yeah, it's close I'm enough. Not a freak. I am not a freak. Oh come on, mate. You've got a I'm meme out. You've got a meme. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to keep an eye on your YouTube channel. I will um, make this a video. It will be on my website, and I will have a link to the Africa lads uh, YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to his YouTube channel. Do a search, find them. And then um, we can get the word out about Hyperverse. Now, that being YouTubers, I always say to people, make sure you hit the thumbs up. When you hit the thumbs up, it actually tells YouTube you like our videos. And then they distribute our videos throughout YouTube. And that's how we get these videos seen. Now, when you've got a thousand subscribers, you can monetize your channel. Then what that happens is because YouTube like you because they make money out of you. So then people like me who have monetized, my videos go out further because they know they can make money from them. But when you're a new YouTuber, you need people to subscribe to your channel so you can monetize. Once he gets a thousand subscribers and 4,000 views, then his videos that are in his channel will be distributed. So like the channel, we really appreciate it. And also, if you hit subscribe and hit the bell up, because I'm a techno genius, um, if you hit the bell, every time I publish a video, you'll get a notification telling you that there's a new video out. 
and that's yep. we appreciate it. Now, um, before we stop broadcasting, I want you to say those three words again. Now, anyone that's thinking about investing in Hyperverse or Hypernation, what would you tell them? No, no, sorry. Before we do that, sorry. Let's let's do that. What you just that those questions okay. you just asked. Let's ask them again. But before that, I just want to say one last thing. Well, the last few words for anyone watching these videos, people out there. There is no easy way to become a millionaire. There is no easy way to make money. So please don't get yourself caught up with people who come and tell you you make you become a millionaire in six months or a year or two years time. It is certainly, I can assure you 100% that it is not that easy. So please do not do that. Think carefully before you get into any kind of business like that, somebody going to promise you anything. I was, in fact, I would suggest if somebody promised you that kind of thing, just say no. <laughs> it's too good to be All true. Right, now let's go. Now, now ask the questions. <laughs> All right. Now the questions is, um, I've got to do this um, this thing here. Do you know what I do that for, mate? The clicker, yeah, because it puts a spike in the sound file. And when well, we are streaming live on YouTube at the moment, and people will be getting annoyed with watching it because I'm out of sync, so I'm ah, uh, delayed by about two seconds. So, but yeah. when I release the video, uh, I will be able to line up the audio with the lips. But I can't, you, I've sat there for hours trying to look at me opening my mouth, and just as I make a noise, line up the audio, but with a clicker, <laughs> it puts a spike. And I can go, whoop, as it, yeah, you just align it. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. All right, so I want you to say those three words again, scam. Yeah, but ask the question. Oh, uh, you, oh you, now, you're somebody, the question, now you're I, I've, got this, I've got this opportunity of a lifetime, and I think it would be really good for you and your family. And it's an investment opportunity, and I don't want you to miss out. It's called hypernation. Have, have you heard of it before? My people, it's a scam, scam, scam. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, yeah, let me click the right button. Whoops, there we go. See you guys. Thanks for tuning. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and do a hunt for the African lad. <laughs> <laughs>